This meeting is okay. being recorded. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Today's Restaurant News Networking Group. We are a group of vendors in the restaurant industry who are here to help each other, to get to know each other, and do business with each other, and also to help restaurants if they have a problem or a question that they want to bring to us that they can't seem to solve, we can uh, help because we are positioned as a source for the restaurant industry to help you in any way that we can. If we can't do it here, we know people who can. So uh, please use us. Uh, uh, go to our YouTube channel at Today's Restaurant or call us at 561-620-8888. We have uh, two new faces on the board this morning. We have William Bradley and Benny Smed. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Benny Smed? Okay. Uh, Smith in Swedish. Oh. Oh, you, you, uh, I'll talk to you after the meeting. Uh, <laughs> uh, what we do at the beginning of the meeting, we'll go around and introduce each other and uh, we introduce ourselves to each other. And after you're finished with your uh, information, give us how we can reach you, website, email, or phone number. So I'm going to ask Bill just to give us a quick uh, explanation of what you do so that we know what it is. And then I'll double back with you. Just uh, we're a treasure. We, we're based on the Treasure Coast. We got the other end of the storm. Uh, and uh, we sell robots to restaurants, hospitals, managed care facilities, nursing homes, anybody that needs devices. Uh, to enhance their staffing. Uh, we have robots that deliver food from kitchen to table, uh, hostess machine that, that walks a guest from the hostess stand to their table. We have a dish pickup machine that will pick up dirty dishes. The idea, very simply, is to keep the server on the floor and allow the server to take care of more tables. So the server gets more money and tip um, we have them focus on sales rather than service. Service is important, but sales is primary, and they can focus on that because they're not distracted by running back and forth to the kitchen, waiting for a busser or somebody else. We also have products for the pool table industry, and we have products uh, managed, uh, for managed care facilities. What's the name of the company? My name of the company is Florida Hospitality Technologies. Okay. And the website is floridahospitalitytechnologies.com. It's a mouthful. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll double back to you in a little bit. And Benny, give us a, a quick intro as to what you do. Yeah, so we, we came out with a solution for sustainability in the industry, which is non-alcoholic cocktails. There are, there are great NA beers out there, but there was no non-alcoholic cocktails. Of course, you can use them as mixers too. People are thinking of health after COVID, especially with skinny cocktails and other solutions, and you can use these ones too. Uh, there's next generation, 33% of the market don't drink alcohol. They will use other things. And then you have 50% of adults, they don't drink alcohol either. And people are getting away from the sodas too. So this has a taste and smell, and it's the only NA which has a burn, which can give you a placebo effect too. So... Mixology is the brand. We have three flavors out now. Uh, Smoky Margarita. We won bronze medal as well in the World Championship in London or USA. Uh, we won the most innovative award. And, uh, and in California, we are six months new, growing fast, first USA and then worldwide. But we're here to consult and help the professionals in the hospitality industry too. So uh, you will find us on mixology.com. And it's a woman-owned, woman-made product from USA. Do you have distributors around the country now? Yeah, we started rolling out with Kehi and Unify now for dry January, actually. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, on our homepage and on Amazon nationwide already. But then we are 
in Vegas, for example, we have a distribution company and we're looking now for distribution companies, in, in, like smaller ones with good customer service in Florida, New York, Texas, and California states to start with I, uh, on premise. I met a gentleman at the, at the show, the Florida show who, from Columbia, and he has a uh, quinine and cinnamon drink mix that uh, I prepared a proposal for to bring his product into the United States in, in a big way uh, through advertising and public relations. So I don't know if you uh, can consider that, but we can talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we're open. I mean, we make the industry better and healthier together, you know. So. Okay. Thank you. Welcome aboard to both of you. And, Thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to let everybody have their turn to tell you what they do. And we'll start out with uh, Ed. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Howard. Uh, my name is Ed Gurton with Seaco Sales in Orange Park, Florida, just outside of Jacksonville. We're an equipment supply company that specializes in frozen dessert equipment. So we have batch freezers, soft serve machines, whipped cream machines, mixed treatment machines, uh, slushy machines, uh, display cases. Uh, you can reach me at 904-334-4489 or our website is seacoastsalesflorida.com. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce, you've been so quiet this morning, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm glad it's Friday. I'm glad the, the hurricane is is gone. Um, I saw some pictures that I couldn't believe of the erosion from the uh, from the uh, the water, and uh, it's absolutely incredible. It, it was a Category One, and and the amount of damage that that it did to the East Coast is is absolutely yeah. it's devastating. It's unbelievable. So anyway, on that note, good morning, everyone. My name is Bruce Silver. The name of my company is Employers Rx, and we help small companies to operate like big companies. We provide them with the human resource expertise, uh, resources and technology to level the playing field that, so that they can compete for the talent and the, uh, that they need to uh, grow their business and become successful. Uh, I'm a PEO broker. I work with companies called professional employer organizations. Uh, they provide uh, all of the back office that you need for employee administration, the expertise. They have HR professionals on staff. Uh, they provide payroll, workers' compensation, uh, all sorts of health plans and perks and, and, um, and um, provide the compliance that is really important today when you're dealing with employees. If you have an employee that um, touches another employee or a customer inappropriately, you can have a very big problem. So uh, they have people on staff that will help you make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed and um, alleviate any situations that could turn into a big expense. Uh, Bruce Silver, Employers Rx. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank you. Uh, Terry, good morning. Good morning. Terry Appel, today's restaurant news. Um, I basically run the office and most importantly, the leads report. Um, this is a monthly subscription of restaurants, hotels, bars, et cetera, coming in to Florida. And I also have a list for Georgia that comes out every month about the ninth in an Excel spreadsheet. And in that you get anywhere from 40 to, I would say about 40 new leads in Georgia, but in Florida, it goes all the way up to maybe 70, possibly 80 brand new leads. These are the owners, the name of the establishment, about when they're opening, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses. So you can do whatever you want with these. You can sort them by zip. You can sort them by state. We've been doing this eight years. I have Gordon Food Service. I have Cheney Brothers. I have the Florida Restaurant Association. 
everybody renews year after year after year. I have individual salespeople from these companies that want these leads and uh, they're second to none. There's lead groups out there and then there's this lead report. Anybody that wants a sample, please email me and I'm more than happy to send it to you. It's not going to have the email addresses on it, but the ones every month do and they're brand new. They they were not on the on the list before. So if you want 40 to 80 brand new restaurants, bars, hotels coming into Florida, I can provide that for you. And how do we get to you? I'm sorry. What's your, what's your email address? Terry, T-E-R-R-I, at T-R-N-U-S-A dot com. Okay, thank you. And that list is extremely inexpensive. Again, been doing it for years. Anybody that's in this group and joins this group gets a discount. And uh, that's it. Have a good weekend. I forgot to mention at the beginning that today is Veterans Day. Do we have any veterans in the group? Well, you're one. Oh, um, I, I was going to say technically I am, but I wouldn't overplay that. I wasn't in a very long time. Doesn't matter. You're still a veteran. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, th thank and I have an honorable discharge, just in case anybody's wondering <laughs> <about> that comment. <laughs> Same with you, I would not even doubt that. <laughs> Again. Well, so, so thank us for our service. Yeah. You and I. <laughs> uh, the rest of them are too young. Go ahead. Brian. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I was, um, I was in high school in the height of Vietnam, but I was in charge of keeping the Viet Cong out of Buckhead. So. <laughs> <laughs> you did that well. Out of Buckhead. <laughs> yes, I thought you were in charge of keeping them out of Vandalia, the beach. They were going to land there. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's another one of my. Marker. Yeah, I know. I, I I just sold that beach to uh, Charlie Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry I brought it up, Brian. Yeah. You're up. All right. Um, I'm Brian a again. As you know, Chris is the comedian in the in the group here. <laughs> now we never want to guess that. <laughs> um, I'm Brian. I'm with a company called Rogue Financial Group. We're a company that is a commercial equipment financing company that uh, provides primarily to the hospitality industry, but we also work with non-hospitality um, sector. But again, it is commercial equipment financing, so it could be from a startup to an existing business, uh, small projects large projects. Um, it is, and again, it is um, commercial equipment financing, um, typically two, three, four, five years. Um, benefits of it is, you know, save your cash flow, um, also has tax credits. And um, again, I'm Brian with the Rogue Financial Group. Thanks. And uh, it's 404-723-7222. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Steve, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Whitehill. I'm a business broker, and I do the semi-simple thing of helping people buy and sell business businesses. Um, I can be reached at 561-376-7500, or an email address is steve at anchor, b as in boy, b as in boy.com. And my website is, uh, well, it's anchorbusinessbrokers.com, but that's a lot to type, but you can also type anchorbb.com and you'll see my website where you can find businesses to buy and value your own business so you can do that all on my website are you seeing are you seeing more businesses going up for sale now based on what's going on with the economy um you know the, that's really a good question i haven't looked likely um i the way you asked the question i can't answer it and i'll explain why i uh we have a, an MLS of businesses. And um, after COVID, well, before COVID, it was about 3,500 businesses for sale at any one time. Uh, during COVID and uh, after COVID, uh, it was about 2,600. 
and I haven't looked in the last month or so, but I will tell you this, um, there is much more activity about people buying and selling businesses. And they're getting, um, they seem to be getting better pricing beyond, businesses are sold for a multiple of what they earn. And that is historically fairly stable. In other words, it, it, if it would vary 10%, that would be a lot. But what I see now is businesses being sold for significantly more money than they would otherwise warrant, um, which is interesting to me. And I ask my compatriots periodically about that, and no one has a good answer. No one has an answer, period. If you get good or bad, it just yeah. is. You, you touched, on, you touched on, a, on a point. You mentioned uh, prices going up, et cetera. You know, I, I'm... Notice that the show, because I've been going to those shows a long time, the people that were at the show, manning the booth, for the most part, were new people to me, people that I had never seen before, companies that I had never seen before, and uh, most of them were younger than me. Well, almost everybody's younger than me, but uh, these these were all young kids, sort of entry level, not entry level, but newer people in the industry. And it's interesting because I always go back to the example. When my son was young, he wanted a pair of basketball sneakers. And I asked him how much how much they were. He said $120. I said $120. I used to get sneakers for $10, $15. So it, it, it depends upon the generation that you're living in. And a price of $1,000 to, let's say, to me is different than $1,000 to somebody of this generation because they were born into this price structure. That, you know, am I making myself clear on this? That, that's actually very true. However, I'm saying something different. I'm sorry for not making myself clear. Hit, uh, uh, there is a unique multiple. It isn't uh, very precise uh, in the sense of, it may be something like 2.35, but it could be 2.2, could be 2.5, it could be 2, could be 1.9. So, but de depending upon the specific business, that multiple, no matter what the business was earning, was very consistent. I am seeing things now that would, net, let's say, sell for two and a half times what they earn. Selling now for three, three and a half, and four times what they earn, and that that's a shift. Um, um, that's very different than saying things have just gotten more expensive. That's true because inflation, you know, as the company makes more money, it, you know, you multiply that that multiple times that more money it's making, it'll sell for more. I'm saying it's maybe making the same amount of money, but it's still selling for more. So the the, the, the a, absolute price has gone up. Right. And I just checked while we were talking, and in fact, there are about the same number of businesses, as I just said, about 2,600 businesses available. So things have not changed. In fact, it's been a significant shrinkage that's, that's interesting. In, in the businesses mm -hmm. for sale. Because I've been seeing a lot of notices come across for asset sales. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, could be a trend. Um, asset sales are usually historically for one of two reasons. They mean a closed business. For instance, a restaurant closed, but it's you know, it's ready to go. It's in good shape. The, you know, furniture's there. The kitchen is there. Everything's there. Just, you know, change the name and, you know, go forth. Um, sometimes they also do that lately. In, in another, another reason for doing that is for businesses that have a tremendous amount of cash coming into the to business, disproportional to what may be standard, which most people don't report um, shocking, I know, but nevertheless true. Uh, so uh, when you have that situation, you can't, you know, you, the multiple you apply wouldn't make sense, but you can sell the assets at, at a, at, you know, at, you, you put a price on it and the assets may, really may not be worth it, but they take into account that it's sort of an operating business. So I, I've, I've seen that trend as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And in fact, I'm dealing with an auto uh, auto repair shop where uh, most businesses, uh, cash-wise, retail, they take in maybe 
five, 10%, you know, a, a lot would be 15 to 20. This guy takes in over 30% cash. And, uh, that's significant and difficult to account for. And he's not flexible in his price. So I have a real problem uh, proving um, what the value that's there. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hmm. Uh, Bill, why don't you uh, fill in anything that you might have missed or uh, do an official well, intro? Well, I, I would say right now, um, um, what we're selling is new to the market. It's not like, say, a point of sale system, which has been around for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. I have another POS system, so oh, I know what that is. When you say robot, people kind of look at you and they don't really know what to make of what you're saying. Um, what we've been doing is presenting it as uh, as a fixed asset solution. Uh, a lot of a lot of restaurants and other businesses are ha still having problems with staffing, not having enough people. Um, a robot can replace a person to some degree with some of the tasks that they have to do, allowing the restaurant to operate with less people thus possibly dropping more money to the bottom line at the end of the year. Um, the robots also are a fixed asset, meaning you buy it once, and um, if, if you buy it in 2022, you write it off as an expense, but you still write it off. And for both businesses that are doing between one and two million a year, the return on investment is um, less than 12 months. Sorry, hold on. Spam. Um, and the liability of the product is anywhere between five and 10 years. So for the, you know, if you're a business owner, you look at it and say, okay, I'm buying something for say $20,000. I'm writing it off in the first year as a business expense, plus I'm uh, appreciating it. And I got this thing for, um, for the next eight or nine years. I've got a restaurant owner out in Dallas who told me, he probably dropped 1.52 employees off of his payroll, no insurance, no like of food that he has to worry about. And he said the robots show up every day. He's got enough of a battery charge to run 12 to 15 hours. And they and his his customers like it. It's a novelty right now because it's not very familiar in the United States. So that's that's the challenge that we're facing up hell when we're talking to restaurants. It doesn't work with my ambiance. Oh, I'd never have a robot in my restaurant, whatever. But the reality is that the economy continues to squeeze and people are looking for ways to save money. They're going to let employees go. It's happened before. We've seen it. So the robots can replace those employees and help keep the doors open. So that's, were you, that's, were you that's at the that on it. Were you at the show? Were you at the Florida show? Yes, I was. Do you have a booth? Did you have a booth or were you walking? No, I, I, I ended up getting a booth. Um, I had just got done doing the Fort Lauderdale for a restaurant event, the technology fair. So we were going to do this one as well. Two weeks before, I found out that there were six companies that were going to be on the floor that were selling the exact same product. Yeah. Everything that I was. And I said, no way. I said, I'm not going to go to the effort of lugging hardware up there. Stuff's heavy. And, and have another booth only to compete with six other people that are selling the same thing I am. Didn't make any sense. So I pulled my booth at the last minute, got my refund back for a restaurant association. was very good about that. Um, it was, it was, that's, a problem, that, that's a problem in my industry right now. You know, in point of sale, which is what I came out of, we mm -hmm. had regulated networks. People had territories and had quotas. They participated in national marketing. With a lot of the companies coming in right now, it's like, you want to buy a lot of robots? Fine, I'll send it to you from China. Mm -hmm. Majority of the companies right now are manufacturing products uh, out of China. They're very, some of them are, are good. I saw a product called Pudu, P U D U, and probably the best product out there in terms of the hardware and the software behind it. Um, so, but Pudu doesn't have a national distribution program. For example, when I walked the show, I met the dealer from Miami. I didn't know there was a dealer in Miami for the product I was selling. I should have. There's another one up in Cape Kennedy. I didn't know he was up there. I should have. I've been buying product out of Dallas, out of a distributor in Dallas, because that was the only thing that I knew. So a lot of these companies coming out of China are failing because they don't really understand how to distribute the product. They're just mm -hmm. throwing shit against the wall, excuse the language. And if they sell it, they sell it. They don't really care who to sell it to. That's going to ultimately um, damage their reputation. Yeah. 
How many, there, there were quite a few companies there with robots yeah. at the show. Yeah. Uh, what what does a robot typically cost? Ro the Poodle robots, there's uh, a five, five or six of them right now in the product group doing different jobs. They range in price from 12.8 to 28.8, depending on what robot you pick. The, the, the least expensive robot um, is uh, the one that we use to seat guests. It also has small serving trays, so you can also use it to deliver food from the kitchen to a table. Um, it's got a billboard on it, so the restaurant or whoever's using it can put their marketing information on it. So as for example, if they're walking a guest to their table, they could be flashing out today's specials are on the billboard. So it so it provides a marketing function as well as that. Um, and it's interactive. Most of these have artificial intelligence and speak multiple languages. Uh, the highest price one, the 288 one, um, they finally figured out how to, how to get to use elevators, talk to elevators in the state. That's a big deal if you want to do hotel room service and you need to be able to go between floors. Um, they got it working in China for a couple of years now, but United States is different because we were kind of the birthplace for robots, us in England. So we have multiple companies, multiple products in those companies, not all integrated. So they've been going through that uh, process of updating their software to be able to make it a viable product so we can sell to a Marriott hotel chain or whatever. So that stuff is coming. They're getting smarter, and they also can be used as a billboard where people can go up to it, ask a question, and get an answer. Like, which direction do I go for the FRLA show, left or right? You know, I, I did the same thing. I walked to the wrong end of the building. Had a lot of exercise that day. All right, let me get I'm going to move on. Does anybody have any questions for Bill? I do. Uh, Bill, it's very fortunate that you're on the panel today because... I'm about to invest in two restaurant robotics companies. One's called Blended, the other is Miso. Um, uh, these are Reg A, so they're not public companies you're getting in. Um, however, I would love to bounce some, some uh, questions off of you um, later on after the panel. Uh, and, and the other question I have for you, is that is that Harry Truman behind you? Yes, it is. I picked it up when I was uh, when I was at the Southern White House on a cruise a number of years ago. <laughs> so yes, it is. Um, but yeah, well, absolutely, uh, we 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 can talk. It's it was, it's very interesting. I went to the uh, Chicago restaurant show a few months back, and there were three halls there, all packed, um, and there were about six or seven companies there. And Gloria and I, my wife. We're looking at we were looking at the product that we elected to pick up. We thought it was the best product to represent and to distribute. And we looked at some of the other ones and we're looking at fit and finish, quality of the plastics being used on it, the logic in the software. The toughest thing we found with robots that have to be in an open space is they have to be able to figure out where to go and they have to be able to figure out where not to go. In other words, we don't want them bumping into you um, if they have if you happen to be in their path. We also don't want them bumping into the furniture either. Um, and that stuff's gotten progressively better. The Kudu robots actually uh, maintain a communication. If you have more than one in your business, uh, they actually have a communication. They're constantly talking to each other. So they're not taking the same path or getting deployed where one's blocking the other. So it's really, really interesting. It seems like that low level programming, that you, it's not flashy, it's not sexy, really is what makes that product superior to a lot of products that are out there. Not a product that's out there, it'll get, they'll get in a the corner, they'll get in a the jam, they won't be able to work their way out of it. Got to be able to yeah. do that. So, you know, it's technology it, is progressing. It's interesting because what I'm looking at is uh, are the robots that are in the back of the house that are actually doing the food prep, the mixers and stuff. Yeah. And uh, and um, and uh, some of them are fully contained units in their own right that that are selling product like like um, smoothies and soups and salads and uh, Flippy, um, I think that's the name of the company. Uh, focuses on flipping hamburgers for fast food restaurants. And right, that's Miso. That's Miso. Flippy, Flippy is one of their products. They, yeah. They're coming out with a new one that that is. Um, uh, for soda, so okay. you place your order for soda, and and uh, it does the pour, it does the the cover on it, it it yep. gets ready for the for the driver or or the server, yep. 
Yeah. Very, very cool stuff. We're going to continue doing this because we're going to continue to struggle with employees. So we yeah. need to replace those employees, which are pet. Well, you know, repetition what I'm, task. What I'm wondering is it's not just replacing the employee. These robots can do the job yes. faster, better, without any mistakes. You get the, the same product this, every time. Correct. Um, so the quality control component is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And, and some of them are collecting amazing amounts of data on the consumer side, which is for yeah. nutrition. And and also, it's, it's, it's wild. Absolutely wild. My, my uh, counterpart in um, Dallas did a deal with the local McDonald's franchising. They had an issue that they wanted to solve. They wanted the ability to be able to run the food out to the drive through customers who had to wait for their orders. So they could park in a parking spot and they figured out how to move the robot from inside the building to outside the building to identify what car spot it had to go to to deliver the food. And they've adopted it and now they're rolling it out in other areas. So yeah. Yeah. I can imagine somebody just putting that in their back seat and driving off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, 125 pounds on one of them and 75 pounds on the other. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, hard time schlepping them to the trade shows. Uh, let me let me jump in here for a minute. I uh, I think I forgot Chris. Sorry. So, uh, How can you forget Chris? Chris? I know I get to you. Can't forget you. <laughs> uh, Chris Kaufman, placing all star restaurant talent in the restaurant industry, primarily salaried positions. Geographically, primarily the Southeast United States, we work on behalf of the restaurant companies to bring them the talent they desire. I've had two assignments called in this week for pastry chefs. One is a corporate pastry chef situation. They'd like to get somebody from a uh, executive corporate pastry chef position or a high level top tier pastry chef with a Ritz Carlton or an upscale uh, restaurant company. And these companies, they could run a full page ad in the Orlando Sentinel if they wanted to. They've got that kind of money. However, people who are happy doing what they are doing are probably not reading the Orlando Sentinel help wanted pages. So therefore, a select phone call placed by a broker of opportunity, otherwise known as a recruiter, me, to a uh, talented player can save them a lot of time and money and wasted energy. We work on behalf of the restaurant companies, like I mentioned, and um, have been recruiting quality all-star restaurant talent since April 1981. We can be reached at 404 All-Star, 404-255-7827. Come back to see us. <laughs> Thank you. And I didn't forget you, Benny. What? I didn't forget you. You're up now. Off the tell, us, tell us about <laughs> you, your company, what you do, and how we can reach you. Well, I mean, there has been uh, NA beers for a while out on the markets. And, um, and we were like uh, about to do a hard seltzer, and then we found out that we can do something tasty. It's not like the real deal. So it's like the decaf for coffee. <laughs> Super clean pasteurized so they're healthier even for kids in the age group to drink compared to any sodas you can't even compare it with sodas so we're maximizing the revenue for restaurants and hotels now because uh, there's two conversations now. going on here what's uh, hear that yeah somebody's is that, are you in a public place benny no no, no i think somebody's got a tv on or something yeah, I hear, I hear some dogs sometimes too, I think. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, yeah, so I mean, we are helping the hospitality industry to just get more sustainable friendly, finally, because it starts with what we put in our bodies. You know, I mean, we want the clients to come back tomorrow too, and the employees. So, you know, sodas, fill up sodium benzoate, corn syrup, ease, and next generation too. It's not only uh, the adults, of 50% who don't drink alcohol. It's next generation C, uh, under 26 years old. They will not even start to drink alcohol. They will use other substances. 
and uh, focus on their health. And that's why they even don't want to drink chlorine water and certain use certain companies' uh, sodas and other drinks. So that's what we are helping out actually now. And of course, I mean, it's a great mixer too. So instead of someone selling one 700 calories cocktail for a person, you can sell seven of the cocktails equals the same amount of calories. So uh, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a fun challenge and uh, we're helping now to consult companies too. Uh, the leaders today might be followers within three years. I mean, it's gonna change a lot within three years and uh, we're going to universities too to help uh, the students. And uh, I mean, they, they, they are very health conscious, especially, and everyone are more after COVID time. So it's a, it's a fun challenge to, to get out there. But you can reach me on, on my email, Benny, B-E-N-N-Y, at Mixology. So this is our, for example, whiskey coke, rum and coke. So Benny at Mixology, M-I-X-O-L-O-S-H-E dot com. And our webpage is same thing, M-I-X-O-L-O-S-H-E dot com. We came out six months ago and we won the bronze medal for USA in the International Wine and Spirits Competition in the big category for low, no alcohol mixers and sodas. And then we won the most innovative award in, uh, in California in August too, voted by all on and off premise uh, buyers, including Walgreens and other big restaurant groups and Top Golf and other companies. So, so it's exciting times. What's your what model to sell to restaurants? What, excuse me? Uh, how, would, how are you planning to market to restaurants? At the moment, I mean, with distribution companies and ourselves contact big hotel groups, uh, restaurant groups, of course, individual ones will be, I mean, I'm trying to at that, we're focusing on Florida, California, Texas, and New York, the bigger states, but nationwide, we are already, I mean, we don't need an alcohol license, so we can sell directly from our, our fulfillment centers. So it, it's really easy, more flexible to, to send it out. You know, it's shelf stable as well, our products. So it's not like fermented, like kombucha or other drinks. So, um, but the, we are rolling out next year with Kehi and Unify. And then, and then we were gonna see what other distribution companies we will work with. But uh, the ones which has more personal service, that's what we wanna work with. And, and uh, not maybe the bigger, bigger ones, but uh, help more like the smaller companies too, to, you know. Are you positioning it as a, a uh, alcoholic beverage mix or it's a straight up, the drink both as i said i mean here is our smoky margarita of course you can add uh, like a tequila or mezcal in there or sparkling bubbly champagne and have a mimosa out of it we were at the delta lounge in july had a tasting for 2500 people it was one third who just wanted to spike it up uh, so you know we don't discriminate the alcohol we started by doing alcohol but now we focus on this because we were about to do a hard seltzer and then we found out that we can do something taste and smell like the real deal. So it's not like a virgin. Yeah. We call it a party slot. <laughs> so, you know, mm. like it, it's, it's, it's not the juicy, mm. uh, juicy mocktails you find in a Four season mm. or other fancy mm -hmm. bar, which they have full of like, full of syrupies and, and very sweet and something like that. The magic is in our drinks and no one else has it. So it's very fun. And, and uh, mm. as, again, there's great NA beers. They taste like the real deal. But there was no nothing yeah. like us, so that's why we focus Benny, on. Are you, are you making your own product, or are you subbing that out to a third party to manufacture your product? We we do. I mean, we do customized for companies, but we don't do private labels. No, but uh, but we 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 have these three products out now. Then we're coming out with the orange old fashioned, blueberry gin and tonic, and a cosmic bitter spritz in December, and then we have three bottles whiskey tequila and gin in bottles so like in a bar they can pour it on ice or or then you mm -hmm. can instead of taking the alcohol whiskey you can take the non-alcoholic whiskey hey i benny i have a couple questions for you real quick um did you say you're in utah or colorado uh we are we are, the company is based from jackson Hole, wyoming oh, but yeah. We live in Miami and we live here and we're traveling around the country. 
Last year okay. we were driving hundred thousand miles, uh, solved like in all total one and more stores sour vodka, which we okay. started with. So yeah, we are out in all total yeah. one and more with that, but not these non-alcoholics, because uh, right. that was we found out that we have more free hands with an NA space. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I have a client that I'm working on in um, Denver, Colorado. Uh, he has a place in Boulder. The place in Denver is called Society. And I'm doing some brewery equipment financing for him, and I'm doing some, uh, he's doing some wine, and uh, it might be something I could introduce you to. He's doing some kind of different, not just a restaurant, but also he's doing retail. He's also doing, you know, he's going to have a, you know, wine and <sighs> beer. But the other thing is the product that you're you're trying to sell is I think it's a it would be a good fit for a lot of these breweries around the country. And the reason is, is because some people go to breweries and maybe don't want to drink. Um, and a lot of these breweries have put in these nitro coffee machines for people that want to drink, but you know, want to want a coffee, but that would be maybe supplement something to complement the, the nitro coffee and other things. Um, so, you know, I could, I have a guy here in Georgia I work with as a consultant to breweries so I can maybe uh, introduce you to. So maybe that's something that you may, an avenue that you might want to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, of course, again, like uh, a beer here and there can be good, but the gluten is not good. I mean, there is a book I'm reading now, No Grain, No Pain. So yeah. I, at the moment, like I'm having tastings in liquor stores too. <laughs> Sounds weird, but like same as like breweries. I have some meetings with breweries here around Salt Lake City today in Utah. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's like you know, spirits will be there always, and there will be always beers and other drinks. But we are getting healthier as a and wiser as a humanity. So yeah. in the big picture, and you're and you're pushing that as a non-alcoholic drink. So that is a, a great option. Like I don't drink. So that would be a great option for me in any restaurant, any yeah. hotel, any, any function, you know, and, and the flavors sound wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So. For example, I was at the IMAX uh, conference in Las Vegas the other week. And, and uh, I mean, you could see the change that people don't drink sodas anymore because we know what no. nasty no. ingredients there is, including no. like I mean, uh, all the acidity, 3.5%, which dissolve your bones and teeth and everything. I mean, it's so horrible. So people were actually drinking the, the water, waters there. That's all I drink is water. But there's, so there's not much smell and taste to that, you know? No. <laughs> so, so like, in or we want to yeah. have fun products where you can be part of the party. And those who want to have alcohol you know have alcohol and those who wants to mix it or not mix it have this one but like uh, and and as i said you can have a cocktail someone can have a cocktail and then this one and keep the party going longer how many carbs and how many calories in the can we have now 60 cals and 70 70 we are pushing next batch all down to 50 and then we're going to have nine grams of sugar, cane sugar. So we tried with monk fruit. We tried with all kind of sweet sweeteners, but it's not good. And we wanted to mimic, mimic like the, make like decaf for coffee. So like a non-alcoholic cocktail, like, you know, without the alcohol. Not so. the monk fruit. No, not the monk fruit. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can. So nine grams of car or of sugar. That's really good. And, I know. And because. Yeah, we do a keto diet, water fast and everything. So, you know, we wanted to ha make something which is still still really good, but you can, anyone can have it like, you know. Great, for, great. I'm sold. So you can have more of them too, you know, instead of like one with, I don't know, 30 grams of sugar. I mean, a refined, uh, most of the sodas, fever trees and other mixers have 38 grams of refined sugar and all other EEEs and other things. And there's like a lot of like NAs out there is, either botanical ones mm. or then you have artificial flavored ones so i mean ours are pasteurized which is quality so yeah all righty well thank you for coming and thank you for the information and william same bill same thing yeah thanks for coming thank you, Hope you, thank come you back. for organizing this uh, connecting because it's all about networking and connection in this industry
Uh, did, oh, no, I might as well give you my elevated speech. <laughs> um, Howard Appel, I'm the founder and publisher of today's Restaurant News. We've been publishing since 1996. We offer advertising in our digital newspaper online. We offer email marketing. We offer video email marketing. As Terry said, we offer the Restaurant Leads Report and, of course, the networking. And we also are involved with trying to help the industry uh, recover some money to help in their operating costs by applying for the ERC tax refund. Uh, it's, a, it's a process that uh, my associates are happy to walk you through the process and to find out whether you qualify and how much money you qualify for. So uh, if you're interested in that, please go to our website, trnusa.com, and click on the red bar. And it'll take you to a little form to fill out, and I'll have my associates give you a call and have a 10-minute conversation, and you can go from there. And uh, I thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. I had a whole list of of an article that I wanted to get to, but as it always is with the case here in this group, we we get pulled off in different directions, which is great. And uh, if you have any questions, again, if you have any, if you're a restaurateur watching, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. 561-620-8888. We'll see you next week. Next week's going to be the I think the pre-Thanksgiving meeting. Uh, bring your turkeys. <laughs> yeah, then there won't there won't be a meeting on the twenty fifth. That's Thanksgiving weekend, right? Is right. anybody? Oh, I was gonna I was gonna do a meeting just for the uh, robots. <laughs> <laughs> no way to talk about your children like that. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to see the robots eating turkey? It's not mm. pretty. I, I think you know that that you know Howard. Uh, he should um, maybe share the board and maybe do a presentation uh, at the next meeting. Of what me? No, oh, uh, this oh. group. <laughs> yes, this group, Thanks. so that people can actually see it and see what it does. Mm -hmm. Like share the board, like. Oh, okay. You're talking yeah. to Bill, yeah. not me. <laughs> No, I'm talking to you. I don't get the question. I'm as just usual. The question is, <laughs> should Bill be the, a, pre a presenter of the next meeting? It's up to him. Yeah, I'm more than happy mm -hmm. to. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll talk about it off camera. Yeah. Talk about you're, you're it off camera, camera that way you can uh, work out. Those. And, you, and you as well. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me officially end the meeting. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you. Have a great weekend, everybody.